Almighty God, God loves your voice. Amen. He loves you. He loves everything about you. He loves your voice. He loves who you are. He doesn't make junk. We're going to celebrate him. I think he celebrates you. We thank you, Lord. We love you so much. We thank you, Lord, for each and every person. God, we thank you for all you're going to do today. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to come in a real and powerful way. Why don't we stand together this morning?
year and a half. Come on up. For some of you that don't know me, um, 2016, uh, January was just, my dad passed away suddenly. And then May came around in Mother's Day. I found a lump on my breast. I didn't tell my daughter, I waited a week. And then another one came. My daughter's a nurse, so she's like, Yeah, I gotta go to the hospital. I was like, Whatever. So we go to the hospital. Unfortunately, they found three lumps plus 17 inside. So I was diagnosed um, with lymphoma cancer and breast cancer. When I woke up from the surgery because of these two spiritual women, men of God, and they taught me so much. Even though I was still loopy, the surgeon said to me, yes, and he even had a tear coming down his eye, yes, meaning that it was positive, and I said, no, yeah, come on. no, and I went back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, I know that God has given me, there, there's so many things throughout the whole healing process, is what I call it. Um, but every chemo, every radiation appointment that I had after chemo, I started at, at 113, 113 pounds. I weigh 150. I never lost a pound. I gained weight every time I went to my appointments. Everybody, the doctors couldn't even believe it. I was like a testimony to the doctors, to the to the, to the radiologists, to, to everybody in there. Like, you know, my daughter even cut me off with a boost. She's like, no more, you need to start drinking Slim Fast. <laughs> so, throughout it all, I mean, the thing of it is, is I feel like God is really, he just really wants to encourage, not just the body, but outside of the body, but really inside of the body, because, and the funny thing is, is I always told Pastor, Pastor, I, I, I'm into inner healing, women who are hurt, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, you know, somebody that's got a broken leg or arm and walk up. Okay, that's great. Good for you. You, you can do that stuff. <laughs> you know, I want to get to the heart relationship. And then look what happens to me. <laughs> it's kind of so funny. Um, in the middle of it, my daughter, in the middle of my um, treatments, my daughter, God is so, so good. Um, she uh, found out she was pregnant which gave me an extra push. So God just gave me extra strength to keep going. So it gave me something else to look forward to. I'm not gonna say it was the greatest thing that I went through, but God has been, was so good to me. He was really so good to me. But the point is, is the body is losing faith and hope and courage that prayer does work. I am yes, just a yes, sinner yes. saved by grace. Amen. Okay, I am not perfect. I don't live perfectly. I am saved by grace. I try. I love my Savior. Amen. And He Amen. loves me. Amen. And He loves you. Yes. And I couldn't think of a perfect shirt to wear today when I was thinking, like, love, love, love never fails. Amen. Like, have courage. Have hope because He does heal. He does. He really does. Amen. And he loves you guys. Amen. He Amen. loves everybody. Like, Pastor, I always, we were talking, I laughed. I'm like, no, I'm his favorite. That's why he healed me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but we're all his favorite. You know, and if you believe, if you pray, you will receive it. Amen. You know, and when you want more of his glory, be careful for what you're asking for, because yeah. it is a very high price to pay. Because when you want to surrender your life to him, he will take 
He will take what you want to give to him. Amen. And so, Amen. Amen. Um, yeah. It was basically eight months. Um, God healed me. And March 22nd, I am cancer free.
So, so we invite people to become covenant members. It doesn't mean we love people less or more. But okay, in kind, in <laughs> but, but we invite people to become covenant members because there's two parts to our, our, our walk with the Lord. One is relationship, but the other is a sense of responsibility. That just like in a family, there's a responsibility to care for one another. And, if, and the same in a family, in a church family. And so we ask people, again, it's not binding like we're going to hold up these edicts or things and beat you over the head. But you're saying, yes, that I want a relationship with this church as a family. Is that, is that okay to say? Yeah. And that's the essence of what we do when we invite and receive covenant members. So we're just coming into a... A covenant based on family. Um, anybody on the board? Do you guys want to say anything? <laughs> so we're going to, if we can hand out and just greet the, the people with the uh, Vision 101. Vision 101 is our foundations class. Okay, they're not, are they members? Of? Yeah, they're all members. Oh, sorry, my dad. <laughs> I guess I wasn't good on that one. Okay, so they have all of their certificates and everything. So, so we're going to receive them. Family. Yeah. Family. Family. There's a very important proverb, 47. Family screws up. Just saying. So we want to we want to receive them. And if, if they could just come and, and stay out here, yeah, yeah, but we, we're not going to dunk them on the way through. <laughs> and just just receive them and, and, and give them a hug, folks, and say, and then we're going to say the, the, the covenant. Yeah. And if you're not a member, that's okay. We're going to say this together. We're going to say this, and it's with our new members as well. Can we begin? Through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the presence of God, in this church family, we do now most solemnly and joyfully affirm our covenant love with and to one another as one local body and family in Christ. We covenant together, therefore, to strive for the advancement of the kingdom of God and in this church of Jesus Christ, abounding love Christian fellowship in the power of the Holy Spirit. Covenanting together Christian love, we affirm to watch over one another in brotherly love, to respond in godly wisdom to one another in sickness and distress, to be kind. 
lasting, and we really are inviting everybody to the church picnic. We already have people talking smack about the volleyball game. <laughs> so, so we're, we already have stuff going on there, so I'm sure it's going to be energetic. How's that going to be? But we want, we want to release uh, people who need to get ready for water baptism. If you want to go in the back and get changed, to just go ahead and do that if you're already ready. If you can kind of come up toward the front. more I do water baptism as they, as they prepare, the more I do water baptism, the more I get glimpses of how important it is and how significant it, it is. And like many here, you know, when Mary Beth and I first gave our lives to the Lord fully and completely, one of the things we did was really in obedience to the scripture we were water baptized. And that was back in the 80s. But since we've been doing this, and I've been doing this for you know a while, since almost over 30 years, the more I study water baptism, the more I realize that there's a tremendous impartation and a tremendous significance to what takes place, what takes place in the waters of baptism. And there are people even in the church now who have seen their, their growth in their life just take it off exponentially because of what happens in the water. And there's a number of different models in the scripture. So it's not just multi, it's not just one facet, it's multifaceted. But the more I understand it, the more and the, the way I've been teaching it, to try to get my head to wrap around and to understand is initially. It's like a wedding ceremony in this, in this way. When, people, when two people get married, they stand up and they make vows. And the vows then create the covenant. And then following that at some point, they exchange rings. And the rings are the outward sign to the public, to people of that covenant. And many times that's what water baptism, not many times, that's what water baptism is. And it's that way, not just on earth, but it's that way in heaven as well. The scripture teaches over and over and over that when people gave their life to the Lord, they gave their life to the Lord and then they were baptized. And I Again, depending on our background and our stream, no pun intended, <laughs> our, we think of baptism as just an act of obedience, which it is. But I can tell you, and I, I believe it with all my heart, there's a sense that there will be recording angels in the room mm. that will record what takes place. These things will be written in their book of destiny, according to Psalm 139. Yes. They will be marked as a pivotal day before the Lord. Because even August 2nd, 1975, wow. Pastor Mary Beth and I at St. Mary's Church in 102 degrees, <laughs> we made our vows. We made our vows. We, we, we made the covenant. But then we exchanged the rings, which was a public declaration of that covenant. And the waters of baptism, number one, is that public declaration before heaven and earth. I'm telling you, it's marked in heaven as much as more than it's even marked on earth. Number one. So in the waters of baptism, there's a new intimacy as we make that statement. Number two, in the waters of baptism, we, we partake of a new identity. That week, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Behold, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. We know that that's part of the vows. But the waters of baptism cement that new identity. It's interesting that one of the first things that Paul the Apostle did, he had the encounter with the Lord, 
he, he was knocked down, he was blind for three days, didn't eat, didn't drink. The first thing he did when he came up, now he was a Pharisee of Pharisees, knew all of the Jewish law. The first thing he did when he came to was that he was baptized because he knew the power of what that meant in the spirit. So in the waters of baptism, we then cement the fact that we are new creatures in Christ. The third thing that happens is we get a new intimacy, we get a new identity, and we align ourselves with God for a new intensive care procedure. That God begins to work in us. When we give our lives to the Lord Jesus, our spirit becomes alive. But don't look at anybody else when I say this, but we still got some of our old stuff. Yeah. Don't. He's talking about you. <laughs> and so God begins to work a work where he helps us and changes us to get rid of that old stuff that, that gets in the way that's not pleasing to him, that keeps us from all that God has for us. And then as we get rid of that stuff, we're more and more conformed into the image of Jesus Christ. Amen. And as we start looking more like Him, greater fruit comes out of our life. Amen. And we start to see the power of God move in greater dimensions. Yes. Yes. So all of that takes place in the waters of baptism, as well as bunches of other things. So we're going to baptize. Again, you know, our board is, is part of that, our, our leadership team. But we're going to start. Um, Jean is still getting changed. Let's wait for her. Jean? Oh, Jean is... Jean is already? Yes. <laughs> We're just waiting. Here comes Jean. Wonderful. Oh, wonderful. So why don't we... There is no correct order to, for this. We're going to begin with some worship. We're just going to worship for a moment because this is a family affair, folks. Amen? The family is part of this. We're seeing, we're witnessing a cementing together of things in the Spirit. So we're just, we want to invite and just allow Holy Spirit to move. If um, people who have a sense in the Lord. If you get a word for somebody who's being baptized, okay, make sure that you know you, you feel free to share that. You want, but it's being recorded. You know, but we want God to have His way fully and completely. Amen. So let's just kind of quiet our heart as we prepare. We invite you, Holy Spirit. You. Thank you, Lord. See you. 
like to to talk about the the origins of uh, me and the name Simon. In my family, my grandmother was the first to become a Christian. So when his grandfather wanted to marry her, uh, he was told he had to be baptized first. <laughs> and to choose a name. And he chose the name Simon. So when I was born, So when I was born, my grandfather had ridden his bicycle from his village to where my father, my father was. So uh, when his grand, when he said when my grandfather arrived, he wanted to make sure that I was called the name Simon because my father had actually given me the name Barak, Baraka, which means blessing. <laughs> So it was necessary for him to bicycle that long distance in order to make sure that he was baptized with the name of Simon and then go home. <laughs> oh. So it is Simon Jr. or just Jr.?
mean, that was awesome. And so we're gonna, we're just gonna celebrate. We're gonna do a picnic. Um, we wanna. We, Bridget needs some help. Maybe some of the young men, whoever it doesn't have to be men. She wants to clear the, the sanctuary. Um, to, to move some chairs around because we start dance camp tomorrow. She hasn't asked me to leave. <laughs> I'm bummed. <laughs> but can we stand together and just, just bless? We're going to bless the food right now as well so that when we get things going, we can just dive right in. Father, we thank you for such a significant, important spiritual day. Lord, that has been marked in heaven. That has been marked on earth. Lord, for our new members. Lord, for our, those who are baptized. God, we just thank you for your faithfulness to all of us. To all of them, to all of us. Lord, we're excited for what you're doing. Uh, Father, we pray a blessing on each one here in the name of the Father and Son and the Holy Spirit with every blessing of heaven and earth. Lord, and even now, we ask you to bless the fellowship, keep everyone safe, bless the food, that there be such a good time with just joy and friendship. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.